Today I want to talk about the Faction War Store, which is the best way to spend your rubies. Should you go for characters, should you go for equipment, or should you go for consumables? For those of you who haven't been following my channel, I've been playing the game for more than six years and I've been covering it on YouTube for more than three years. So no, I know basically a thing or two when it comes to spending your rubies efficiently. Now, if you are a complete beginner, this is the first thing that you need to do, in my opinion. The first character that you need to unlock is Classic Ermac. Why is that? Because Classic Ermac will basically enable you to beat more or less every boss in the game. This is how strong Classic Ermac is. Yes, it is going to take you a lot of attempts if you are trying, let's say, to beat boss this in Fatal Tower, but at the end of the day, you will uh, do it because of the Classic Ermac passive, which harms the bosses and they cannot do anything about it. There are no resistance to it. So definitely Classic Ermac is the character that you need to unlock right off the bat. However, Classic Ermac requires only one copy, so you don't need to max him out. Just unlock him and that's it. Another question uh, arises, should you proceed with characters or should you go for equipment? I did a similar video two or three years ago and I said it is probably the best uh, thing to do to go for the equipment first. However, now I kind of disagree with that statement because the game has changed a lot. The thing is about uh, all this equipment here, is the fact that it works mainly in Faction Wars, or it's really, really situational. However, Faction Wars isn't really that relevant anymore, unfortunately, even survival mode Faction Wars isn't. So, if I was to tell you two or three years ago that it is better to go for the equipment first, now I have to change my statement because currently this equipment is outdated, it is not that great, and more importantly, you can get better equipment by grinding towers, and which is the best character that will help you to grind towers after you start the game. This is by far Classic Scorpion. Classic Scorpion is an incredibly OP character, in my opinion, one of the very best gold characters. Once you understand how to use him, barely you can destroy any tower. He's great against bosses, even though his passive on the bleeding part of his passive doesn't work. He's great more or less in any battle. He's extremely, extremely good. So I would advise you now to go for Classic Ermac, just one copy, and then go ahead and max out Classic Scorpion because this will help you tremendously in towers. This guy is absolutely busted. So once you're done with Classic Scorpion, then you can proceed with the equipment. Don't get me wrong, there are good pieces here. For instance, the Bloody Voodoo is decent, the Bloody Tomahawk is decent, the Tusha is horrible, the Shadow Sash is just okay, uh, Shansung Storm is pretty good in Faction Wars, but once again, this equipment uh, has... Uh, it's all around based to help in Faction Wars with certain exceptions. And once again, Faction Wars isn't really that relevant at the moment. I hope in the future it gets buff, but at this point it's not really that great. So once again, I would go for Classic Scorpion. So first thing first, go for Classic Ermac, just one copy, then max out Classic Scorpion, who will be your main carry in towers, all together with, let's say, if you have Fusion Zero MK11 Scorpion, uh, Johnny Cage, Co Combat Cup and stuff like this. So, uh, and after you're done with Classic Scorpion, then focus on the equipment. And now, you're going to probably ask me, what about consumables? Are they actually worth? And the answer to this question is, not really. Now, even if you're dying in survival mode, that's not a big deal. Once again, survival mode and faction wars is not really the most important game mode in MK Mobile. So, uh, Spending your rubies on revive potions, opponents or all, stuff like this is not really that great. However, there is one place where I can say that it's kind of uh, okay, it's kind of worth spending your rubies, and if you have really, really good rare piece, probably it's going to be tower rare piece, it is kind of okay just to spend 150 rubies so that you can repair it and you can do another run. Let's say that you have a team, a diamond team or a gold team, and you're doing fatal tower in survival mode, you do the Fatal Tower, and you know that this piece basically enables you to destroy almost anything the game has to throw at you. So this piece makes your team OP. It will make any team OP. Then it will, be, it will make sense just to spend 150 rubies to repair this rare piece. Go ahead and do another Fatal Tower using another team, again with this tower rare piece. Uh, 500 rubies for epic repair, uh, equipment repair is not worth. Uncommon is actually okay. 40 rubies is fine. Rare equipment repair, only if the rare pieces OP, and trust me, they are better <laughs> rare pieces uh, than uh, even the epic pieces here. For instance, uh, Bloody Voodoo Doe is a good piece. I'm going to showcase what it does at this very moment. There we go. Let's see. I'm going to... Uh, can I, Actually, I can, I can uh, filter on no tower. All right. So there we go. Bloody Voodoo Doe is, should be right here somewhere. There we go. 
So it gives 10% boost only in Faction Wars, unfortunately, 25% power generation, 15% reduced power cost on all special attacks. This piece is just okay. Uh, however, there's one thing that's not usable in Towers, and this is the Faction Wars only 10% boost. So let's compare the epic piece that we just saw to one of the best pieces in the game, in my opinion, Varmin's Lucky Hat, which is from Tower, and it is a rare piece. So in a way, it will cost you 150 rubies to repair this one, and it will cost you 400 rubies to repair the other one, the epic one. Look at this, 20% chance to steal 2% of opponent max power on basic attack. You can say it's not a big deal. Actually, it is because if you have weak point attacks, this basically means that you can snare on basic attacks and that's massive. On tag out, gain 20 seconds of team shield. This is more than busted. And on top of everything, all opponent's team characters need to collect 30% more power to fill up each power bar. So in a way, you can give this piece to your support character, to a character that you don't uh, really use that often in your team, and uh, it will be a game over for all X-Ray teams in the game. Even if they start with an X-Ray, the moment they attack, their power bar is going to get adjusted because they need to collect 30% more power, and then they're going to lose the X-Ray, they won't be able to do the X-Ray. Same applies to Special 2. If they have Special 2 ready, they attack, bam, their power bar gets adjusted, and now they have 1.2 bars of power, so they cannot do Special 2. If they have 1 bar of power to do Special 1, they tag in, this is going to get adjusted, and they have 0.7 bars of power, so they cannot do uh, Special 1. You see where I'm going? For one thing, this um, particular piece makes sure that you can snare people with basic attacks, which is huge. Give this uh, to great fighters such as MK11 Scorpion and you're good to go. It gives you team shield for 20 seconds. And on top of everything, it uh, protects you from X-ray team stuff like this, even if this is not on your active fighter. This is absolutely busted. And once again, this comes from Towers. So the name of the game in Mortal Kombat Mobile is Grind Towers. This is the main reason why I said to you, if, when it comes to the Faction War Store, don't go for equipment. The equipment in Faction War Store is outdated and it's quite frankly not that great. The best epic piece here is not better than the Varmin's Lucky Hat which I just showcased. And the Varmin's Lucky Hat can be repaired for 150 rubies, while the epic pieces from the Faction War Store and actually any other epic piece can be repaired for 500 rubies. So I would definitely go for the rare equipment repair if I had to, if I had a really really OP rare piece and I want to, um, let's say, keep grinding Faction War so I can rank higher in survival mode then spending some rubies on rare equipment repair makes sense. So if I have to summarize the video, first thing first, uh, if you are a new player and came about, first thing first you need to do is to obtain one copy of Classic Ermac, then go ahead and maxed out Classic Scorpion. You need to make sure that you know how to use Classic Scorpion. I'm going to link a video uh, uh, in the description of this one, showcasing how to use him, because if you use him properly, you cannot die. You cannot even get hit. Then go ahead and max the equipment. It doesn't matter which equipment you max first. I would go for a Bloody Tomahawk and Bloody Voodoo though first. They're quite good. This one gives you bar of power. This one gives you power generation, reduction cost of the special attack, so uh, it is okay. But once again, prioritize uh, Classic Scorpion. You need to max him out a sap. Once you do that, you're basically good to go in almost any tower. And when it comes to the consumables, don't spend anything here, unless you really need to uh, repair a very OP rare piece or you need to repair a very OP uncommon pieces because there are very very good uncommon pieces in the game. Do not spend on anything else here. Alright guys, so this is going to be all for you today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you know the drill, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Take care guys.